Hi everyone, it's Roger here from What's On at DisneyPlus.com and today I have got Roger Neal who is the composer of the new um, Hulu star Disney Plus uh, original movie Darby and the Dead. So I wanted to um, bring Roger on here to kind of, you know, if you can give a bit of an introduction to what you, um, to yourself and to what you've previously worked on, that'd be fantastic. Okay, well from one Roger to another Roger, it's good to be here and uh, thanks for inviting me. That's cool and sort of, could you give us a bit of an idea of what you've worked on in the past? Yes, so I'm a film composer um, and television composer. Some of my projects uh, that I'm best known for include the um, Amazon series Mozart in the Jungle, uh, films 20th Century Women, Beginners, Marie Antoinette, um, earlier in my career, the animated series King of the Hill. And I've been around for a while doing this stuff. How did you get involved in kind of um, curating music for films and series, etc.? Yeah, in hindsight, it seems like I was always destined to be there. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, I was a musician from an early age and just loved doing it. And uh, I think as a kid musician, I just was really curious about all sorts of music. And just I played guitar, I played piano, I played flute and orchestras. I just loved all kinds of music. And I had so many um, disparate tastes that I ended up never getting particularly good at anything, which is the ideal um, formula for being a composer. So... Um, <laughs> So I thought, you know, I started writing music and just um, and and dabbling in 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 film when I was a, a student. It just kind of fell in place. Um, also, just having a wide range of interest in music is helpful, you know, like because I can, in a pinch, can write orchestral music or rock music or jazz music or world music or create weird hybrids of all sorts of stuff, which is always super super fun and interesting and kind of necessary for being a film composer. And obviously with um, Darby and the Dead, how did you come up with like the overall like feel and sort of sound of the, the score for the film? Yeah, that was a journey. It was a real journey. Um, as often is the case, you know, a lot of the time spent for a composer writing the score is not necessarily the music the audience hears at the end. Um, sometimes we'll write, you know, the score three or four times before we finally settle on something that feels right for the film. It's a part of the exploration, and you do this exploration with the filmmakers, with the director, with the people involved. It's always the case, and it's always fun. It's a, it's a fun part of it. This movie, Darby and the Dead, that exploration took longer than normal because it's a weird uh, and interesting hybrid of a lot of different styles. At, at heart, it's a, um, it's a teen comedy drama about dead people. So you have the supernatural parts, too. So, um, you know... the. The um, the trick or the the task the challenge for a composer is to try to find the voice that seems right to tell all the stories. And quite honestly, when I started scoring it, um, I went in the wrong direction. Uh, me and the and the filmmakers, we kind of thought it was one kind of sound, and it wasn't. We th thought we were scoring a ghost movie, and uh, that's where I started with. And I made, wrote a bunch of very colorful, sort of you know, really cool, um, magical Harry Potter esque kind of music and it, it was kick ass but then after we got down the road a bit we decided this is not the story this is it was what we we set out, set out to do but it didn't feel right so we doubled back and and approached it more like a um a heartfelt teen comedy with a lot of soul so um stripped it down took out all, all the orchestral stuff um sort of made it uh interesting hodgepodge of hip-hop and rock and just hybrid instruments and came up with a whole different sound. And that is a sound which is very fresh, I think, and fits this fits this movie really, really well. It was it was a hard journey, Roger, but it was like it was worth it in the long run. Yeah, because it's kind of one of the especially where we like with the film um kind of being set in high school and it's kind of got like lots of like young youth elements, obviously like with TikTok and kind of things like that. So mm -hmm. was that hard to kind of sort of ch channel into the idea of it being like high school? Like you said, you know, the fact that you changed like after you did it, was that a big part of it? Yeah, was it hard? No, it wasn't hard to, to um, zero in on the high school part of it. It just, it just so happens that I have recently scored a number of stories uh, with high school or uh, storylines or or young people. Uh, for example, one movie that I did that that um, sold me to 20th Century Studios, which is who who produced Darby, is a movie I did uh, two years ago for HBO called Unpregnant, and which also takes place in. Uh, in a high school setting, also a comedy with a serious with a serious side of it. Um, so, I've, so I've been doing that kind of thing. 
uh, and sort of have a, a voice. And then the other thing that, that really made it about Darby and the Dead that made it an extra fun challenge is this. They've, it takes place in what appears to be an American high school somewhere, but it was shot in Cape Town, South Africa. So it, there's a certain look to it of the high school and the houses and just the topography and everything, which is like not America, but you don't know where it is. So it so it kind of gave us, in, in a sense, some license to create a new high school universe because it was kind of um just a a bit um a bit unfamiliar the way it looked that's cool and um, what has been your sort of the biggest challenge working on Darby and the Dead well like, as I mentioned earlier clearly without a doubt the biggest challenge was changing the course of the sound of the film uh, halfway through it's one of the hardest things I've ever done professionally uh I think maybe it, it might be an an analogous um comparison be like an actor who uh uh, is approaching their character one way, you know, and then decides, well, that's not the character at all. I'm going to, I'm going to create a totally different character uh, with my same body and same face, but somehow find a way to sell the character differently. Um, that was a challenge. That was hard uh, and uh, and grueling, but it was, as I said, worth it. And uh, I was up to the task. That's cool. Um, what was your highlight of working on Darby and the Dead? Um, oh, so many things. Um this is the second film I've done with the director Silas Howard, who was a genius, and it was it was lovely to work with him again and uh, help him realize his his vision and uh, and like that. I think it's always nice to be invited back. You know, it's like you uh, it's like going to a party and then being invited to the next party. So I was always very pleased, and we worked well together. That's great. And you previously mentioned you work on um, King of the Hill. And um, what was it like working on that series? It was great. It was one of the one of the um, first you know well-known professional things i did and, and you know there is some and, um some similarities in a way to darby and the dead because king of the hill is an animated tv series um but the music that i wrote for 13 years the music uh doesn't doesn't treat the characters as animated we uh, the composer uh the composer's role in, in this kind of animation is to bring as much humanity um and emotion uh and um and kind of soul to to the storyline. So I approached King of the Hill as if I was scoring real people um, who happened to be drawn, but I didn't concern myself with that. So likewise with Darby and the Dead, I uh, we have we have ghosts, we have dead people who come back to life. But the way I I scored music for them is as if they are real people with real problems and real issues and real emotions. That's good. Cool. And they're currently working on a King of the Hill revival. Um, would you like to like return to work on that one? I'd love to. I'd love to. You know, um, I remain good friends with Greg Daniels, who created that show. Uh, we've been pals for decades, and uh, I wish them all the best. Best of luck, and and we'll see. We'll see what happens That's to cool. it, and whether I'm on board or not. That's great. And obviously, those are all part of um, 20th Television and 20th um, Century Studios. But would you like to work on any other projects on Disney, any other major franchises that they have? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a working composer. I'm just happy whenever the phone rings. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yes, Disney, if you're listening. <laughs> That's cool. And I just kind of, um, to finish off, and I ask this to everyone, what has been your favorite Disney Plus original so far? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for that. That's um, cool. <laughs> that's perfectly. We'll give you Darby in the Dead because that's going to be coming to um, Disney Plus in early 2023 around the world, and obviously on you can find it on Hulu right now, and also with King of the Hill. You, you know, can find you know, that you know, on... the second we stop talking, I'm going to have 51, 50 that I love so much. So I apologize to your listeners. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's fine. And also, yeah, you can find um, King of the Hill on Hulu in the US and on Disney Plus in many countries around the world. And yeah, on that note, guys, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure you go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. Like, follow, and subscribe. Also, a huge thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and also on our YouTube channel memberships. And I'll just see you guys in another video. Laters.